Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, November 9th, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Today we got a diary from Xavier talking about Palm the pluggable authentication modules. Now, this is a security feature and a security tool, but Xavier talks about how attackers may abuse this tool. The way Palm works is that you're able to set up configuration files for different services. So for example, SSH, LDAP, but also for authentication actions like for example, sudo. And you can then define modules that will, for example, check passwords, check multi-factor authentication keys, or whatever you want to use for authentication. Of course, authentication is always critical for security. And an attacker able to manipulate these configuration files is highly dangerous. In the simplest form, an attacker could, for example, just enable some weak authentication mechanisms and with that bypass some hardening that, for example, you took for SSH or other exposed services. But then there are also some outright malicious Palm modules, for example, Palm Steel, which, well, as the name implies, steals your credentials. The Palm modules, of course, have access to your credentials because after all, they're used to verify them. And this very simple module, as uh, Xavier mentions, only 40 lines of code allows the attacker to dump any credentials entered by the user into a flat file. Monitoring your Palm configuration is certainly critical and something that should be done continuously. Some kind of file integrity monitor is what Xavier here suggests. And that's certainly a good idea. Also, it's not just Linux. A lot of Unix and BSD-like systems, like for example, Mac OS, are using this for authentication and definitely treat all these uh, configuration files as highly sensitive and they should never really change. So doing some kind of file integrity monitoring makes a lot of sense here. And remember back in September, I was talking about a critical vulnerability in manage engines at self-service. Uh, this is a self-service portal that can be used to manage your Active Directory credentials. And of course, as such a highly critical system in your network. And the vulnerability back in September allowed arbitrary code execution without any authentication. The vulnerability was very widely exploited uh, pretty soon after it became public. And uh, Palo Alto's Unit 42 now has a nice write-up about one group of these exploitation attempts that they have observed. The initial access happens, of course, via the REST API vulnerability, and that's CVE 2021-4053-9. That vulnerability is used to install a dropper on the system to then download additional malware. In most of the cases that Palo Alto observed, uh, the Godzilla web shell was then installed. That, of course, provides uh, persistent access uh, to the system, even if the actual vulnerability is patched later. In addition to Godzilla, they had a few cases where NG Lite uh, was installed. And uh, once uh, the attacker had access, then it went essentially uh, into credential harvesting, initially just a couple of of uh, password hives were extracted, but then later additional tools were installed to more automate it and across the infrastructure, essentially exfiltrate uh, passwords. So very methodical and apparently just uh, targeted into uh, stealing uh, sensitive information uh, from uh, these systems, first doing it a little bit slowly and then installing more tools, doing it a little bit more noisy and hoping to still get away with it until all the credentials, all the secrets are stolen. Needless to say, if you do have an unpatched exposed system in your environment, it probably has been exploited for quite a while now. 
Also, nice thing that I think people don't talk enough about is that most of the command controlled IP addresses were US based, even though the actor behind these attacks is not supposed to be US based. Well, overall, really, these uh, geolocation kind of blocks do very little good in order to protect you from a little bit more sophisticated attacks, which are probably the attacks that you're really worried about. And we have a real neat new attack against machine learning in particular when it comes uh, to image recognition. And this attack takes advantage of the fact that when you're training your model, the images that you're using are usually downscaled. So a lower resolution of the image is being used than you originally supplied. And in this paper, it's shown how the actual image can substantially change if you are downscaling the image. Of course, this requires a specifically prepared attack image, but they have some examples here where an image that looks like a cat, once it's being downscaled, basically once the resolution is reduced, it actually looks like a dog. And uh, when you're looking at the images, there's really nothing that would tell you that either image is somehow manipulated. So of course, if you are now pre-labeling your training images uh, using the full resolution, and then you're feeding these images into your machine learning uh, system and uh, the machine learning now fails because as the image is being downscaled, it displays a different object and as such does throw off your model. Pretty Interesting and intriguing attack. Wonder uh, what other systems may be vulnerable to this where uh, images are downscaled, upscaled, uh, for example, uh, for recognizing IDs or the like. Thanks for listening. And as usual, if you like the podcast, please leave a review on your favorite platform. Yes, we are also available via Amazon Alexa. So you can add it to your flash briefing. If you have problems finding it on any kind of a podcast service or so, uh, please let me know and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.